sorry for any inconvenience. This is how much I trust Chris. BRZ in this. This is kind of common sense, but obviously you're going to need to pull your car up on that. If we manage to do it with summer tires and the winter with snow on them, you're good to go. So Chris is going to explain it. I am going to try to do the other side, but he's better at explaining it since he's teaching me. So a couple basic things. Anytime you jack up any car, like it's not worth risking your life. You know, if you're going to be under the car at all, always make sure that you're going to chalk off the front wheels. So that way if like your e-brake fails or something, it doesn't roll forward as far. And then uh, when you're jacking it up, always make sure that you so like on this car we're going to jack it up from the differential housing which is right here and show them again right here and there's the uh differential fill nut and this metal piece right here is where we're going to jack it up from should be a nice safe secure place and we also got it on the race ramps because it's a low car we're so slamming it boys we're doing it it's as low as he, he thinks it is the road we just came up that, it, that I let him drive it on isn't going to be any worse than anywhere else we go. So yeah, as low as he thinks it'll it'll be able to manage, that's how much we're going. I'm sure every single one of you that has an FRS GT86 or a BRZ is well aware of the travel, the stupid amount of freaking travel that those springs have. So if you have a jack and it's like you can't get the whatever that is right there. Brace ramps. Brace ramps to come out because it, it won't lift your car high enough. Just you're gonna have to have somebody else obviously, but have one of your buddies. What I did is I just picked up on the wheel and then he pulled that out from the back. So yeah. yeah. Just as a very quick extra layer of safety, throw the wheels under the car because you never know, man. Rather be alive and ruin the wheels than have a car fall on your face. This is Chris's idea. Yeah. <laughs> I wouldn't have thought of it. It's one of those things, you know, like you're working underneath a car and for some reason, like, say your jack stand splits in half. It's not likely to happen, but just in case, you know, right. if you're sitting under there, you have your head under there, you only have eight inches of room. That wheel, that's an eight and a half inch wheel, you know, that gives you that little bit of breathing room so you might not die. We're gonna record one suspension on the back and then we're also gonna record one suspension on the front. That way everybody that's trying to slam their car right now doesn't have to watch us do all four of them. Yeah, so if we open up the trunk here, you're gonna pull the, uh, the black mat out, which just, you know, the trunk Where your tire right is, there. yeah. And then one of these is gonna be on this side over here. One of these is gonna be on this side over here. All I did was just simply remove them that way we can access the coil over top hat bolts, which you can see, I already removed them from this side. There's one of them back here, one of them right there. And then the same on this side over here. There's one there and one there. And then that's the, that's the first step essentially, other than getting the car up. And unbolt and everything. <laughs> yeah. So the next step after we undo those top hat bolts inside is we're gonna come underneath here and this is gonna be your this whole big bar is your lower control arm. What we have to do is undo this bolt, which is a 17, this bolt, which is a 14, and this bolt, which is also a 17. That's gonna make it so the suspension drops down enough so we can actually squeeze this coil over out of there. So boys, these are the new Rev9 uh, Hyper Street 2 coilovers, whereas these are the regular stock BRZ ones. And as you can see, there's they're already three inches of uh, shorter tubing. I mean, you know, we are going to adjust these a little bit. I mean, or we can just slam it, you know. I want to, yeah, I, I do, dude. I want to <laughs> slam it really bad. Yeah, as you see, this spring is a lot tighter and it's taken up a much shorter distance. So that's where the majority of the, uh, where the majority of the, uh, lowering comes in. It's the shorter spring, shorter strut combo. Yeah. But yeah, these are, uh, all ready to go on in there now, so. Something that can be also pretty useful to have two people. One to put those up, and the other buddy to screw them on to hold them in place. That's how much of a difference. I'm sure you guys know what the stock car is. That's, that's stock suspension. That's how much of a difference coilovers make. Yeah. So, just to put it into perspective for you, I can fit four fingers under there comfortably and still have wiggle room. Whereas in back here, 
I literally like can't even fit my whole finger all the way underneath there. Like that looks so good. See, that's not even stance boy or nothing. Yeah, I mean, we have it on a piece of wood because it's too low <laughs> to, to pull the jack it's out. actually too low. To, like, but that's crazy, the, Let's go over the other side. The other side doesn't look quite as good yet because it's not settled down, but... Right. It's still hell of a lot lower than that front stock is. Like... Right. That's crazy. And that's without man. us even tuning anything yet, you know? Yeah, this is a, I think we did 16 threads, right? 16 on both 16, of the rears. Yeah. And then we're probably going to go a little lower in the front. Yeah, just, just because, because the fronts bigger. are, uh, yeah, the front, the fronts had uh, more lift than the back ones did. So, but yeah, that's a. Uh, Oh that yeah, looks man! So good. Dude. I couldn't feel my hands. I wanted to fucking help out today, guys. We're gonna, as like I said, you've already seen a lot of them in the videos. Um, so we're gonna be chilling all summer long and that sort of stuff. But like when I get cold, man, like I can't move my hands. So, not today, man. <laughs> Just an FYI, boys. Just a very quick update right here. We actually ended up forgetting how to show you guys how you remove the front coilovers as well. It's the exact same thing as the rear coilovers. It's just there is a couple of wires that you're going to have to unplug, which you can see in the image of us having to heat that bolt up because it wouldn't come off. We had a really hard time getting those front sway bar links bolts off like it took us about three hours so i just wanted to show you guys that you know it, it is the exact same thing. it's way easier than you think it would be you just unscrew the bolts at the top underneath your hood you unscrew the bolts that you see on the brake pad two bolts there and it pretty much comes loose so yeah you're probably gonna need a torch if you live in an area like me in new hampshire because the sway bar links are freaking stupid. Ultimate test right here because this driveway, I mean, it's pretty obvious. We're gonna go ahead and let Chris put it to the ultimate test. are gonna be fine-tuning it um, it's just it took us a little bit longer than we had expected because some of the bolts on it were uh, they were just like rusted on I feel like so we got the coilovers all installed we're on the maiden voyage right now uh, you, you might hear a little bit of a clunking um, sway bars yeah so we couldn't bar get the nuts off so I'm just gonna upgrade them they were so rusted because New Hampshire and winter and all that stuff and you know the car has 33,000 miles on it. It's gonna have a rusty bolt or two but thankfully I mean we really only had two rusted That bolts. was it and it, it did. The, the it rest took of us it took 20 minutes. Yeah the so the rear ones went on very easily but the front ones it was that bolt. We couldn't figure out why it wasn't coming off. That plus it was fucking 10 degrees out snowing. So he literally did everything for me because I just, I couldn't move my hands. I couldn't yeah, grip anything. It's about 10 degrees outside and snowing right now. And <laughs> we've been doing this for what, the last it's six hours six on the hours, dock. Yeah. yeah. And it took us about three hours, two, maybe three hours, just, just to, to get the two bolts. front bolt, those two bolts off of the front freaking whatever. And it was just because they were rusted on. Most people won't have that issue, but if you do live in an area like New Hampshire with snowy roads, salt, sand, or that much kind anywhere of anywhere in the northeast or northwest, yeah, you, know? you, you might run into that issue, or even an older car. If this was a nice, clean Arizona car or something like that, no issue. Impact would have taken them right off, but just because uh, on the back of the sway bar, uh, sway sway bar arm bolts they're not bolts it's just a uh, a spline connector on one side that kind of fits in so there's nowhere to grab onto on the other side because that's where your bushing is 
So, so we, we were kinda, basically... Kind of destroyed those. Yeah. Uh, we're just going to go upgrade it. Literally left with no choice. <laughs> yeah. Like, and I mean, the it was either that or to have a lopsided fucking... And I mean, the car handles so nice. Like, I don't know if you've ever done this test before. So you go about 40 and then you just... Like, that's fucking... That's like Formula One. This feels like it's on rails now, honestly. I mean, it was good before, but it's like mint now. Yeah. For sure? Yeah, I mean, quite literally, I think it was 20 bolts in total. If that. I think it was actually 16. That really is, guys. And everyone that is watching this to learn how to install the coilovers, I know we forgot to do the fronts. It literally is the exact same thing as the back, except a couple of wires. That is just common sense. Yeah. You're gonna need to unplug and plug back in. And they're plugged right in where you're taking your coilover off. But it's literally the exact same thing. Give these ladies a little flyby. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, car feels amazing, honestly. Like, god damn. scrapes right there yeah i just i don't have like i said i'm left with 70 bucks bro for the rest of the month so i just don't have the gas we didn't scrape there which is great sign right. yeah that's the maiden voyage and i mean you guys saw 95 percent of it. it handles like it's on rails it honestly feels amazing like i kid you not this thing handles way better than my car and the miata is one of the best handling cars of all time right Yours is still more fun in the lower gears, though. Eh, I mean, that's a Miata for you. Right. If you want a $500 Japanese shitbox, that's... Oh, leave that <laughs> one out. Right. But yeah, I mean, that's 500 bucks I've ever spent, man. Can't wait to do some fun. newer coilovers on my car since I uh, broke that spring. And hopefully this coronavirus doesn't fuck us going to learn drifting because I'm going to take him drifting. Yeah, I think, the more... first, I think the first event's May 24th. Or like that weekend that's in the 20, 20s in yeah. May. But yeah, but bring this thing, bring the Miata. Right on. Teach you in the Miata first, and then and uh, extra axle, <laughs> just in case. Actually, these things are like known to break axles drifting. Yeah. There's this guy who lives down in Florida. He goes by Ambush Drift on YouTube. Super dope guy. I met him once when I was down in Orlando, and his FRS completely bone stock, same size.